So I'm brought to this page and I'm going to use academic sign in. So we'll click there. OK, so here I'm going to click Athens sign in. Now it will bring me to the next page. Okay, so it looks like it's just loading. Right, this has signed me in already. Um, so if you uh, are signing into Lexis for the first time, um, what I suggest you do is take a look first at the Lexis, at the Westlaw video um, that's been provided. Um, in terms of the, the login details that you will need, you might be required your University of Buckingham email address, um, which will be your student number at uh, buckingham.ac.uk. The password that you're then asked for will be the password that corresponds with your email account. OK, so it will just be your student account password that you set. Um, and you'll go through that and then you'll be be brought to this screen. OK, and um, so this is the Lexis Library homepage um, and you'll be able to see here that we have some nice shortcuts um, and then we have the ability to explore these various drop down menus here. So let's try out a shortcut here then. We have the option to set out a case name. So I'm going to try Donahue and uh, Stevenson and then I'm going to click find okay and it brings me straight to this response now here what you can see is the the title the various reports some of them with links that we can click on for the judgment accompanied by the report um, but here we have an overview um, and of course, we have the court here, so HL, House of Lords, we have the date as well. Um, when we scroll down to this table, this is quite useful because it sets out cases referring to this case. Um, and you can see the, the many below and cases considered by this case. OK, so this case is considered by this case. Um, that's cases that are mentioned in the Donahue and Stevenson judgment. OK. This table that we're looking at on the screen, cases referring to this case. This is cases since Donahue and Stevenson, which have referred to it. So Donahue and Stevenson has been considered, if we look at the, the top row, in Poole, Borough, Council and GN and another. That's a 2019 case. The court is the Supreme Court um, and it has um, a positive signal here that indicates that it would be a um, good, reliable source to use. OK, um, it was applied. If we look at this in Jones and Whippy, that's a 2009 case, the Court of Appeal um, and again, positive treatment. OK, so that was using a shortcut, but let's try again just using the cases um, menu at the top. So if we use the cases menu at the top, you have the option to set out the case name. Alternatively, you can use search terms. Now, if you look at the Westlaw tutorial, it's referred to in Westlaw as free, free text. Here it's search terms. Um, and we can add in the citation number too. OK, you probably won't use the advanced search um, an awful lot. You generally can use this, um, this, this top part here. So we'll try again with Donahue and it actually gives you drop downs here. So you can click Donahue and Stevenson there if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to do Donahue 
Um, actually, I'm going to, to go back to, to cases so that I have this option again. So Donahue, and then in the next one, I'm going to put Stevenson, search, and you can do it that way if you want to. Now, when you do it that way, you're brought to um, this screen, which sets out all the results. Um, so previously, it brought you immediately to the case overview here. But, but what we've done is we've put it into the, the cases drop down and it sets out for us here the um, various reports. OK, um, so I'm going to click on the case overview. Um, and here we see our first citation number. Um, I'm going to copy that, but before I do, I'm just going to click on it and and show you. OK. So um, what this means is it's 1932. OK, appeal cases um, 562. This is our citation number um, and it brings us to this. So this is the judgment. OK, that we find. Um, so we see here, we start with the judgment given by Lord Buckmaster, read by Lord Tomlin, OK? Um, and we scroll down and, and we can read the judgment there. Um, now, the reason that I copied the citation number is because I'm going to return to cases and I'm going to paste it here. The reason I'm doing this is because sometimes in your uh, notes for your classes, you'll be given the, the case name, but you'll also be given the citation number. So you might choose to search via citation instead. Um, now, this might be useful when you're trying to determine from a, a number of results exactly um, which case you're looking for. So if, for example, there's a case that uses very common names, so for example, Smith and Jones, okay? You might get lots of results. Donahue and Stevenson, you don't get as many, um, but using the citation number just as a cross-reference to make sure that you're reading the correct case, um, that's, that's a good um, way to go about things. So here again, it's useful looking at, at this column because you can see that this is the case overview, um, and then this, when we click on it, will bring you to the All England Law Reports reprint. So this is another report of the judgment. OK, so it starts with, with um, these overviews. We scroll down. And again, we have the same judgment. So it might be that it, it's the, the preface to it. Um, that's, that changes slightly. And you might find the, the more that you read cases, the more you get used to certain types of law reports um, and that you will opt to read those um, if they're available. So that's looking at cases then. Um, let's have a look at journals. So we'll click journals in the top. Again, we have search terms. If you're on, Le on Westlaw, sorry, you'll find that this will be free text. OK, you have the option to search by article title or by author or by citation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set out um, Donahue and Stevenson. Now, the reason that I'm doing it in quotation marks is because I want the search results to be generated for Donahue and Stevenson as a phrase rather than in terms of the individual words. Now, if I didn't do that, I would get all the results that include the word Donahue, all the results that include the word Stevenson, and probably all the results with this V, OK, as well. Um, but I want the entire phrase. So I'm going to search for that. And you'll see that these are the results that are generated. So we have 268 results here. Um, it tells us here the, the source name. So we have quite a few here from the New Law Journal. Um, and then we can scroll down and see um, various different um, journal responses here. OK, so there's quite a few. So, so many to choose from. Um, 
let's just click on this one, police liability and negligence. Okay. So this is our journal article. Um, so here we can see the title, the um, author, and we have the date here. We have the journal name, and then we have the journal citation as well. Okay, now if you're ever unsure what this means exactly, it's useful to look on the right hand side for location because this we can cross reference with the citation number. It sets out that this is volume 146, okay, um, from um, the New Law Journal. Actually, it's issue 6761. Um, and this uh, generally tends to demonstrate the page. Okay, so page 1395. Okay, um, so that's our, um, our journal response. Now we can also go back to the top and have a look at legislation. Okay, so again, we have search terms here, but we actually have the option to just look the title. So I'm going to look at Companies Act 2006. Okay, actually has suggested it for me there as well. So um, let's search. Okay, so here we have um, the Companies Act in full at the top. Um, and the, this is setting out individual provisions from it. But I'm going to click on the Companies Act 2006 in full. OK, so here we're brought to um, the Companies Act. And you can see under part one, for example, we have a link with the number one and then companies. OK, so let's click on that. That's section one, companies. Now. This sets out um, that part in full. OK, so that's one way that you can find legislation. So that's a brief overview of how to use Lexis Library. Um, I would suggest that you have a look at it, have a play around with it, see how you get on. Um, you might choose to opt for Lexis Library over Westlaw or for Westlaw over Lexis Library. But sometimes it's useful to use both because if something's not on Westlaw, it might be on Lexis Library um, and vice versa. So it's useful to get to know how to use both of them.